on France 24. Time for the newspapers uh, now on the programme. Dipti is joining us here on set. You're going to start with those uh, tributes pouring in for the iconic uh, American writer Philip Roth. Let's start with a tweet from the book reviewer at the New York Times, Maurice Kreisman, who posted this tribute on Twitter saying, I hope they hand out Nobel Prizes in the afterlife. Indeed, uh, re referring to the fact that Philip Roth was a towering novelist, as the New York Times obituary section has put it, uh, he won pretty much every literary award except the Nobel Prize. Mm. Uh, in this article here, they describe him as prolific, protean, and often blackly comic. His themes uh, included often dizzying levels of meta-literature, being Jewish, male sexuality like his famous or infamous character Alexander Portnoy from Portnoy's Complaint, uh, a book which the New York Times says, I quote, surely set a record for the most masturbation scenes per page. Politico, meanwhile, calls him an uncompromising writer of uncommon skill. Roth never, I quote, promised to be his reader's friend. Writing was its own reward, the narration of life in all of its shameless impurity. Certainly a character, Philip Roth, uh, passing away. More on that, as I said, in uh, about 20 minutes' time on the programme. North Korea now, uh, foreign journalists, they're gathering there, aren't they, uh, Dipti, ahead of the uh, dismantling of this uh, nuclear testing site. Well, foreign journalists from the US, the UK, Russia and China have been gathering since uh, since yesterday, since Tuesday. At the last minute, that, uh, that uh, group of journalists also includes eight journalists from South Korea mm. who've now been invited to the ceremony. That's what the Korea Jungang Daily reports today. Pyongyang had initially banned the South Korean journalists uh, due to inter-Korean tensions and uh, recent joint military drills between uh, South Korea and the US, but they appear to have reneged on that decision. The Pungiri uh, nuclear testing site will be dismantled sometime between now and Friday, pending weather conditions. And according to the U.S. North Korean news site uh, 38 North, the North Koreans have erected a viewing stand, maybe even two, for journalists to safely view the raising. You found a piece in The Guardian, haven't you, which is wondering, though, uh, if this is all just for show. Well, I think it's uh, definitely a question that a lot of people are wondering, and in, in particular, The Guardian says, OK, the, the journalists have been invited, but notable absentees include experts, include inspectors who can actually study the test site up close. They will not be there during that ceremony. Furthermore, experts believe that the site had already been badly damaged in previous tests, so it might be something that had to be done anyway, but the North Koreans are putting on a show to earn goodwill in the international community. At least that's what The Guardian suggests. Australia, for this next story, uh, the most senior Catholic figure in the world has been found guilty of covering up sexual abuse. Adelaide Archbishop, his name Philip Wilson, well, he's facing jail now after being found guilty of covering up a pedophile priest's sex abuse of altar boys, according to the South Australian paper, The Advertiser, on their front page. It's actually a landmark decision. Uh, that's at least according to an independent academic blog called The Conversation, uh, because this is the first time that such a ruling has been made in a connection to somebody found guilty of being, of covering up sexual abuse. And it, at least for this blog, it sets a precedent for pending matters arising, for instance, from the Australian Royal Commission into church child abuse, but also cases like here in France involving the French Cardinal Philippe Barbarin, who himself has been facing charges of uh, a cover-up. So that next story sounds interesting. Dipti's found a piece in the, the website Vox. It looks at a, an online movement to change the name of Asperger's syndrome. Tell us why. Well, the, well, Vox actually explains that a historian, her name is Edith Sheffer, her, her own son is autistic, so she set about to learn more about the man behind the disorder, Hans Asperger, a pediatrician largely credited with identifying and recognizing autism in the 1940s, mm. and for whom, of course, the disorder is named. Initially, she wanted to write a book about a hero, but she says uh, her hero story turned into a horror story when she discovered his shady links to the Nazi regime during the Second World War. He was not a member of the Nazi party, but he did play a role in identifying disabled children and sending them to a ward in Vienna where they were experimented on or ultimately euthanized. Uh, in any case, uh, her book is coming out, but uh, at the same time, there's an online campaign by an 11-year-old autistic boy to rename the syndrome to social communication disorder. Be careful what you can discover. And finally, from Dipti, uh, a US supermarket is facing the heat for censoring 
a graduation party cake. Now you wonder how can you censor a yes. graduation <laughs> party, party cake? cake. <laughs> Let's see if we can pull up this picture from the Miami Herald that's published on their website. A South Carolina mother wanted a cake for her son who's mm. graduating high school with high distinction honors. She ordered a cake engraved with the Latin phrase for high distinction, right. summa cum laude. Uh -huh. Only problem for the American supermarket chain Publix, the word uh, cum might be interpreted <laughs> as a dirty word, um, which I'm not going to, obviously I'm not going to say on air, but I think you can. Oh, go on. Idea. No, you no not. I don't think you should. <laughs> well, Publix has, uh, so as a result, they decided to censor that word from the cake. Uh, they've apologized and offered compensation, but not before being roasted online, as you can imagine. Uh, there's an epic burn from this article. Yeah. Uh, the Miami Herald writer says, whoever makes cakes at Publix clearly didn't graduate high school with high distinction honors. No, so if I swear in Latin, it's OK. Uh, I think that's fine. I think that's fine, OK. <laughs> Maybe well, not for Publix. I'll go and look some words up. It's a lot of dipsy wrong with the papers. Next half hour of the programme, Dipsy just mentioned it uh, as well. The prize-winning novelist and fearless narrator of Sex, Death and Fate, Philip Roth, dying at the age of 85. We're going to be looking back over his life with France 24. Solange Mujan should be with me on set.